Um, <clears throat> when I got back to Atlanta, uh, when was it? Sunday. Or no, Monday. I'm losing track of the days. No, I guess it was uh, uh, Sunday evening. And uh, I got a copy of the Times. It was in the driveway. And immediately went to the editorial page, which is where I usually go before I read the news. And there was a, a, an opinion piece by Charles Blow, who's one of my uh, favorite columnists, opinion writers. And, and the headline uh, of his piece on, uh, on Monday, uh, yesterday, is what caught my eye. It said, Biden shouldn't apologize to Republicans. And what he's talking about, uh, and I'll cover it a little more detail here in a moment, but what he's talking about is how the Republicans have gone just total ape shit, like, like two-year-olds. Uh, no offense to two-year-olds, but like two-year-olds screaming and farting and wheezing that, that mean old President Biden uh, referred to them in, in a negative way uh, several times and is going to continue to do so up to and including the uh, midterm elections, I hope. But, ooh, did the Republicans, the Christian terrorists, didn't they just get their balls in an uproar about the truth? And that's the thing about uh, the, the degree of, of their uproar of the Christian terrorists in response to what Biden has said about them. The degree of their uproar is um, in, in equal measure to the truth of what Biden has said. It is very simple. You know that as well as I do. But as Blow points out, Republicans are outraged. Maybe they're just pretending to be. You never know about these bastards. But they're outraged that Biden, in recent speeches, is issuing warnings about what Biden now calls MAGA Republicans. Then the word MAGA just kind of, it, it hits my gag reflex. Oh, it just did it again. <laughs> But Biden, in recent speeches, is warning that MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy, which, I mean, you, you, you have to be maybe a fairly uh, intelligent 10-year-old to realize that that's the truth. They are a threat to democracy. Anyway, he, uh, Biden at one point called the philosophy behind the MAGA Republicans as semi-fascism. Well... Drop the semi, boss. I mean, no, I I, I understand. Uh, yeah, semi-fascism uh, in the context of American political speech is exactly what it is. Semi-fascism. But there, there is there is nothing that Biden needs to apologize for, simply because, as Charles puts it, Biden was simply calling a thing a thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in, in fact, and I agree with Blow that uh, Biden should be even more pointed and not try so hard to to dodge this bullshit coming from the Republicans, the Christian terrorists, that he's uh, he, he's making too broad a charge when he talks about uh the people who support Trumpism or, or, or MAGAism or whatever the hell this stuff is called, uh, that he's casting the net too wide when he refers to Trump supporters as semi-fascists, which, which, which he hasn't done that yet specifically. But I don't think he's, he's making the charge broad enough. But that's just me. Now, a couple of weeks ago at a Democratic fundraiser in Maryland, apparently it's when uh, Biden first used the term semi-fascism. And according to Blow, here's a quote. Biden said, quote, it's not just Trump. It's the entire philosophy that underpid, underpins the, and then he paused. He said, I'm going to say something. It's like semi-fascism. <laughs> That's Biden. I mean, that's Biden. He, he, he says, he pauses and he says, now I'm going to say something. It's semi-fascism. <laughs> he is so careful. But Biden comes from a different generation, a different time frame. He comes, it's like he stepped out of a time machine. And sometimes that's very quaint. And, and, uh, and sometimes it's an irritation. I understand that. In this particular instance, uh, I think it's an irritation. 
But anyway, he's from a different generation altogether. So after saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that the philosophy that under, uh, under, um, uh, underlies Trumpism is semi-fascism. Ooh, didn't the Republicans lose their shit? They com- just totally demanded that he insulted for, a, a, that he apologized, I'm sorry, for insulting, get this, half the electorate <laughs> who, who voted for Trump. Uh, no, he wasn't insulting half the electorate. And, and of course, uh, Mitch McConnell and uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy and the rest of these swine, they know he wasn't insulting half of the electorate. Uh, he was insulting. Well, it wasn't even an insult. It was an identifier. Trump is a fascist. The people who follow him are semi-fascists because they don't understand the totality of what Trump wants. It, it's, it's just so simple to people like you. And people like me. So, um, the, the, on the other hand, had to get my thought together here. Uh, these poor bastards who vote voted for Trump a second time in 2020. Um, <laughs> how to put this? How to put this? Um, well, the people who voted for Trump a second time deserve to be called out on some level, for what they've done. they In voting for him again, they had four years plus one year of, of uh, um, uh, watching him run for the presidency. They had five years to come to an understanding of what this son of a bitch was all about, this Trump creep. And then they went and voted for him anyway. So, yeah, they, they the, the people who voted for Trump deserve to be called out for their actions. If we don't want to call them semi-fascists, how about calling them dumb shits? Or, or uh, stupid, stupid head, or <laughs> people who just don't understand how the democratic process works and what it's about. I mean, you, you have a, a multiple choice there of what you can uh, use to identify people who voted for Trump the second time. You know, it, it, the truth is, the orange vomit has consistently shown his fascist tendencies and he's pushed racism he's pushed misogyny he's pushed white nationalism and through all that the so-called republicans the people i now call christian terrorists voted for him supported him defended him so anyone who voted for trump a second time semi-fascist oh please the people who voted for Trump a second time are fucked in the head. There's an empty space where, where their soul should be. Well, they're Christian terrorists, Mike. What do you expect, right? And the truth is, by the way these Trump voters have been behaving, they've been asking for this condemnation that comes out of Biden's mouth now. I, it, it, it's just incredible to me. I, <laughs> well, you know my feeling about that. I wonder sometimes how we all came to live inside this asylum. It's just madness. But anyway, ever since all that bullshit erupted after Biden's initial semi-fascism comment or whatever it was, uh, El Presidente has insisted on on walking back his assertion, uh, and he appears determined to to make a distinction between so-called mainstream Republicans, and they just simply don't exist anymore. There may be people out there who believe in mainstream Republican political philosophy, but that's not what's being applied by Republicans. So, the Republicans... <laughs> The, the establishment Republicans don't exist anymore. And and Biden is trying to dis, d, d, distinguish those people who don't exist anymore from the rest of the people who follow uh, the so-called Republican Party philosophy, which is now semi-fascism, to use Biden's term. I would say fascism, period. Uh, anyway, after that fundraiser where he first used, used the term at a rally in Maryland, uh, Biden said, quote, 
I respect conservative Republicans. I don't respect these MAGA Republicans. Boss, what the hell is the difference? No, seriously. If you voted for Trump the second time around, then you are by definition, to say it the way that Biden might, uh, guess what? That's another thing he says all the time. Well, guess what? If you voted for Trump a second time around, well, guess what? You are a MAGA Republican. You are not a conservative Republican. And guess what? That means you're a dumb shit and a semi-fascist. <laughs> Ooh, don't mock the president, boy. Come on. Come on. Okay, okay. So, um, like Charles Blow, or, or, yeah, like Charles Blow, I've got a very hard time splitting that hair. MAGA Republican, conservative Republican. Come on. Come on. Um, and Blow cites a couple of stats here. Uh, in 2020, 92% of Republicans and Republican-leading independent voters backed Trump. And according to a Quinnipiac University poll released last week, 73% of Republicans still have a favorable opinion of him and 72% of so-called Republicans want him to run for a, a, the re-election in 2024. Well, hello, um, if 92% if of the people who think they're still Republicans backed Trump the second time around then it is perfectly within the realm of statistical probability, not to mention reality, to refer to those people as, as MAGA Trumpites. That's what they are. And I wish they would stop using the term Republican. They are not, by any means, Republican. Um, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower was a Republican. Hell, even Nixon was a Republican. These people are not Republicans. These people have <clears throat> graduated from Christian fascism to Christian terrorism. I, I, I just wish the term Republican could be buried because the people who still use it or self-identify as Republican are identifying themselves with a corpse, a zombie party. But you get the point. So the, the, the bottom line here, the overwhelming majority of Republicans, so-called, support the orange vomit. And those respectable conservatives that Biden likes to tout as his friends across the aisle, the pool of that group is very shallow. You'd be hard-pressed to get the soles of your feet wet if you went for a walk in that pool. Uh, and, and that's assuming that they can be neatly defined as those not voting for Trump. You know, the respectable conservatives that Biden talks about. Um, it, it, it is clear, though, that Biden is sensitive to the criticism that's being leveled against him. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.